How's it going, Laser Bruce's up, Bobby Six Killing, welcome back to Ever 17. We left you on a cliffhanger here last time. Um, Sugumi is currently trying to murder us. So, uh, that's cool. Because she wants us to murder her because we refused. She's going to murder us instead because she thinks she's doing us a favor, <laughs> apparently. Anyway, let's carry on. I couldn't see a thing. And then her mouth closed on mine. Our lips pressed hard together. My mouth was filled with the taste of her blood and tears. I'll kill you. I will. I'll kill you. No. no. Don't leave me alone. No, please don't leave me alone. Please, Takeshi. Please. Darkness surrounded me. Or maybe I wasn't there at all. A darkness without awareness. I heard only the slight rustle of clothing and Sugumi sigh. Hearing that sound, I felt a craziness swell up inside me. Two shadows overlapped to become one, and I plunged into the chaos further and further and became one. Afterwards, I went straight back to the conference room. We survived? Both my mind and body were exhausted. How did we survive? Even though little remained of the night, I slept soundly. When I awoke, I felt refreshed and fully recharged. Apparently no one had noticed my disappearance during the night. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Sora. Morning. Yeah, hi there, Sora. A little later than usual, Sora presented herself in the conference room. So how about it, Sora? How'd the maintenance go? Well, yes. The system is in sound condition, although there would be no way to repair any mechanical damage if it were to occur. The scheduled maintenance program checked out. I can assure you that the entire compound is functioning normally. Well, that's good to hear. After carefully assessing the situation, I found a slight noise in my thought processor. Normal function will not be compromised, so no modifications are necessary. Hey Sora, what does that mean? Well, Coco, it means that... You see, sometimes certain customers want to pr play pranks on me. They tell lies or try to confuse me. And because of that, my memories or programmed responses get a little out of alignment. It tends to cause issues with my thought processing. Sometimes older data gets mixed with newer information, making it difficult to determine which is correct. When this problem becomes severe, it's necessary to fiddle with the system and overwrite the problematic data. However, at this time, nothing too drastic has occurred, so please don't worry. Okay. Other than that, I have yet to complete a full check of the sensor data, which was recorded throughout the compound while you were all sleeping. I doubt any new leakage has occurred, but I will report back to you once I've checked the sensor data. Thanks, Sora, we're counting on you. Yes, leave it to me. By the way, thanks to the maintenance program, the late MMIH terminal response has greatly improved. There was a slight problem concerning the MMIH traffic, but it's been resolved. Terminal communication functions were optimized to adjust to Lemu's current status. Hmm. Hey Sora, what do you mean by traffic? I'd like to know more about what exactly is, was tweaked in the terminals. Alright everyone, why don't we go to breakfast? What? Does it mean she just totally ignored my question? Oh well. Perhaps she just couldn't hear me. Oh, she heard you. Everyone relocated to the chicken sandwich shop. And as always, I cooked up breakfast for everyone. Looking at their faces as they ate, I suddenly felt relieved. The faces of you, Coco, and the kids seemed so happy. Sora just stood by quietly watching them enjoy their meal. However, Zagumi was nowhere to be seen. How are we still alive? After breakfast, we each had plenty of free time. There was nothing in particular to do. Nothing that just had to be done. So without any reason, we all just gathered up, ended up gathering in the rest area. As always, the vases were filled with blossoming flowers. Marguerites, marigolds and roses. Apparently, the flowers were watered periodically by mist from the sprinkler system, helping them maintain their freshness. Oh, we found that out, didn't we, the hard way? I didn't see Sora anywhere. But then again, she did say she hadn't finished checking the sensor data. She'd probably gone to the control room. It seemed that she could concentrate on performing operations better there. Yu, who had been talking with Sora earlier, was strolling alone at the top of the circular stage in the middle of the room. The kid, Coco, and Peepee were chasing each other playfully through the water. I had a feeling I'd seen all this before. After having a good stretch, I watched Coco and the others play. The three of them, two kids and an animal, circling the stone statue. They were playing a game of chase, not really caring who was it. Without seeming to get bored, they kept running around and around. I seemed to be making more effort than they were just watching them. <laughs> what a sight. It looked like fun, but I quickly gave up any idea of joining them. Wait, haven't we seen this? Like, actually, this exact thing, word for word. But this is our first run-through with Takeshi. I'm weirded out. And at any rate, Sugumi had yet to make an appearance this morning. Just in case, I'd left a sandwich for her at the kiosk. 
I don't know if she will actually eat it or not. What would I say to her if I met her? He tried to kill me. So I talked to her again would be awkward. She'd tell me while we were on the jellyfish ride. Kill me. I couldn't. There was no possible way I could do such a thing. But still, why do I feel like I'd messed up somehow? Something had come over me. There was nothing I could do. I glanced up and noticed Coco and the others had stopped playing. Huh? What's she doing? With a worried look on his face, the kid was watching Coco intently. Peepee too had his eyes on her. In the middle of the rest area stood four stone statues. Coco was deliberately attempting to scale one of the pedestals. Here I go! With the heave, she began to climb up the side. It was an odd sight. I ran to the kid as he stood frozen watching her. Okay, hmm. Stumbling as he mounted as she mounted the pedestal, Coco ended up embracing the statue. It's weird that we saw some coke lots of Coco here and there when we were playing as kid, but as Takeshi we don't see any Sarah. We haven't seen Sarah at all. This whole playthrough. Coco, what the heck are you doing? The kid asked her curtly. Yahoo! Wow, that's all I did to stand a little higher, and everything looks different. You see, to be exact, 27 inches higher. Don't you think? Perched on top of the pedestal, Coco said this smiling triumphantly. Hey Coco, is that why you climbed up there? What? Well, uh, actually no. Coco answered with her head cocked. This area right here looks like it's missing something. Missing something? Which area? The statue's back. I kind of thought its back looked lonely. Coco struck the statue's back sympathetically with her tiny hand. And well, abracadabra. Screwdriver at ya. Uttering a stream of nonsense, Coco suddenly produced a flathead screwdriver in her right hand. Times two. And then another one appeared in her left hand. Hey, where'd she get those? She's gonna fall off. But before I could ask her anything, Coco was gripping two screwdrivers and then... Into the back of the statue, she began to carve the stone using the tip of the screwdriver. Here we go. Cut, cut. Carve, carve. And within moments, the back of the statue was covered with gashes. It was incomprehensible, I just couldn't understand it. First she says the back looks lonely and then starts gouging it. For a while the kid and I just gazed at her with our jaws dropped. Hey, hey, what are you doing? The kid yelled as he came back to his senses. I'm carving. Don't you see I'm carving? I'm etching some marks into the stone. Oh really? Etching some marks? I can tell by watching you, Coco. That's not what I mean. What for? The kid beat me to the question. Well, it's because... I was feeling lonesome. And anyway, I was... Feeling sad. I was feeling sad. She muttered in a tiny voice. She worked with great dexterity using a screwdriver in each hand. The tips of the drivers dug into the stones, screeching and forming tiny grooves. Sad? Well, nobody's coming to rescue us, right? We've been abandoned. So what harm is there in wrecking the place a little? The kid and I looked at each other. Kaku looked back at her handiwork. The gashes had begun to take on a shape. It was a human form like a stick person. Its tip formed a round head. Who's that? It's me, Coco. And look, this is Peepee and Chami. Looking more carefully, I could see the two unusual animal figures beside the human form. <laughs> okay, and then... One of the shapes had a particularly large head. It was only half finished. This is Sora. Sora's pretty, which makes it hard to draw. Cha la 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 <laughs> Sang a cute little song. Coco continued to carve. She seemed entirely absorbed by what she was doing. Somehow, I could relate to her desire to throw herself into something. That's destroying private property, it's vandalism. Hey, relax, kid. Now's not the time to be so uptight. Coco's into her work, you can't blame her. Um, right. Here we go, next. Uh oh. Because of her unsteady position on the pedestal, Coco suddenly lost her balance. Hey, be careful. Without hesitating, the kid jumped forward, steadying her body. He grabbed her by the hips to prevent her from slipping down, and carefully lowered her to sit on the pedestal. Oops, thank you. Watch the step, okay? Okay. Ah, uh, I know. Why do you join me, kiddo? You mean... Come on, please, let's both try it. You can carve a picture of yourself and knock you here. And then I was thinking of carving Takepion over there. Okay, here's one of my screwdrivers. Well, okay, thanks. Energized by Coco's enthusiasm, the kid took the screwdriver and mounted the pedestal to join her. Be careful not to fool yourself, kid. I'll be alright. Don't slip, Coco. Why do you let me hold you up? 
Huh? I wonder if it's, that's the... She'll be alright. I was about to stretch my hands towards her, but the kid stopped me. Don't worry, I got her. The kid took hold of Coco's empty hand. While embracing the statue in a hug, Coco and the kids steadied each other. And used their free hands, they both began carving shapes. The statue didn't say a word, though he stood silently, pointing at the ceiling. A while later, what was left in the stone was carved images of six people and two animals. There was evidence of our existence here. And something to mess up the other path when we're on a different timeline. That afternoon, after a light lunch, I looked around, but I couldn't find you anywhere. Looking for you, she ate lunch and then went to the security office in Whitestock. She said something about doing some research. Research? I wonder what that could be. She didn't say exactly. If you really want to know, why don't you go ask her yourself? Yeah, I guess you're right. What about Sora? Where'd she go? She's still in the control room. I spoke to her through the terminal intercom, but she seemed really busy. As usual, Sugumi was nowhere to be seen, but the sandwich I left was at the, ki at the kiosk was gone. Came to think of it, neither you, Sora, nor Sugumi had said a word to me all morning. Something's up, I can tell. At any rate, I figured I'd go search for them, but I didn't know where to start, where I should go. Control room? We'll go see Sora? I tried the control room. I pushed a button to open the door and it slid open. Sora, are you here? I called it her name, but I got no response. The console was silent. That's strange. I wonder if this means she finished checking the sensor data. But if that was the case, I thought she'd report back to us. Sora, where are you? Hey, Sora! I expected to find her hiding in the corner somewhere. I could have for her again, but still got no response. Next, I touched the terminal. Although I didn't know how to operate it, it seemed to be responding. A map of Lemu's su data suddenly appeared on the MMIH monitor, but it didn't tell me anything. There was still no sign of Sora. I decided to check somewhere else. I headed for the second floor. Ah, uh, the infirmary, I guess. Turning down a corridor after climbing the emergency stairs, I came out in front of the infirmary. Huh? The door abruptly opened in my face and a person came flying out and then dodged right past me. In a flash, the figure was gone without even seeming to notice me. Who was that? I whipped around quickly trying to see who the person was. It was Sugumi. Hey. I started to call out but hesitated. The events from the night before popped into my mind. I could stop her but then what? In the meantime, all I could see was Sugumi's back fading further away. Hey, wait up, where you going? Barely getting the words out, I dashed after her. I ran up a corridor and hurriedly climbed the stairs. The sound of her feet faded down the end of the emergency corridor. Her figure had already rounded the corner out of sight. Sugumi? I was out of breath. I'd run about 30 yards, but damn it, Sugumi, you sure are fast. With a fucked leg, sure. I grumbled after her, although she was now well out of earshot. She's got a fractured leg, a fractured thigh, but yeah, she can run really fast on that fractured thigh. It didn't feel like I could catch up with her at all. Her speed was unnatural. She was still supposed to be recuperating. Hey, Sugumi. I called her name without much hope, but there was no answer. In the end, it seemed Sugumi hadn't noticed. It hadn't seemed that she was trying to avoid me, but maybe it was better off this way. <laughs> yeah, man. The less time we spend with her, the better off we are. Giving up, I went back to the stairs and returned to the corridor. I decided to stop by the nearby security office. As usual, the room smelt faintly of smoke. Oh, hi there, Takeshi. Noticing me enter, you turned toward me from the console. Say, you. You haven't been smoking, have you? I only said it in jest, but you looked slightly offended. No way, how could you ask? You know the rules. No smoking until you're legal. You can joke if you want, but I can't believe you'd say that. I mean, just take a look at my fresh, silky skin. This is the soft skin of a lady. This is the kind of beauty that's impossible for a smoker like you. Ha. Huh. You sm spoke smugly, mocking me. Hey, I don't smoke. Oh, really? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, let's stop with the stupid talk about smoking. I just wanted to ask you something. The kid said you were doing some research. Huh? The kid said that? She gave me a slightly surprised look. So tell me, Takeshi, what exactly did the kid say? I don't remember exactly, but... You mentioned you were researching something, and I should ask you myself. Well, in that case, guess I'll let you in on it. Turning back to the console, you began to type. I've been researching stuff about Lemu for quite a while now. She spoke with her eyes glued to the monitor. And then there's the thing about my father. Huh? Oh, have I told you about him yet? It must have been the first day I came to this place. When you started... 
startled me by starting at the dolphin carousel. I'd heard about him then. So have you found something? Not yet. You shook her head slowly. Eyeing the monitor, she hit some more keys and entered the code. And if I could only find the password. Password? If I just had the password, I could access the data inside the MMIH. Normally all the data concerning the MMIH's system is security protection. And of course, their personal data of the development staff as well. So I'm hunting for a key to unlock their protection. An emergency overrun. So that's what you've been up to. Yeah. But I give up. You stop typing. Taking her eyes off the console, she looked at me. Hey, by the way, if you disconnect the MMIH's security protection, what will happen to Sora? Sora? Well, since Sora is an AI program inside the MMIH system, won't she be affected? Hmm, yes. Naturally, if the protection is removed, Sora will be totally exposed. Naked. Naked? Um, Takeshi, did you just think of something kinky? Me? When I say naked, I don't mean Sora's image would be nude. I... I, I wasn't thinking that at all. Yes, yeah, sure. You seem pretty suspect to me. Pretty sus. I don't really care, but... Sora won't become nude. But all her thoughts, memories, and various data will be accessible. That's an invasion of privacy. Well, not exactly, really. Come on, wait a minute. Okay, if you find that password, will that mean you can save Sora? Save her? I mean, could you copy all her source data to a high-capacity hard drive or something? And then take the data out of here by hand, right? Well, yeah, it could be done. Except, that won't be necessary. You spoke coldly. Huh? You don't need to save Sora, she's saved already. How's that? The fact is, Sora doesn't actually reside in Lemo. More precisely, the brains of Sora reside in a supercomputer on Incel Null. Are you following me? Meaning that even if Lemu sinks, floods or explodes, Sora won't be damaged at all. Because she's not even here. She really lives above the ocean. So from our point of view, just like her name means in Japanese, Sora is in the sky. With that, you pointed her finger toward the ceiling. Lured by a pointing finger, I looked up. As if I expected to find Sora there. Naturally, she was nowhere to be seen. Hey, 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 hey. Hang on a second. How could that be? All data communication lines with Incel Null have been cut. They're useless. Sora herself said that. It doesn't make sense. If, as you say, Sora exists above us, then how could she appear before us here? Sorry, I'm still sick. I'm trying to get over it. That's what I mean. Suddenly, Yu's voice level dropped. So what? Come on, Takeshi. You think it's strange too, right? Sora said that thanks to the maintenance program, communication functions were optimized. In order to perform periodic maintenance, the master supercomputer on Incel Null has to be linked with the MMIH here. And since she said the maintenance checked out fine, that means there might be data communication link up and running somewhere. What? Why would Sora keep this from us? What I'm going to say is only speculation, but you furrowed her brows together. I think it's possible that someone is intentionally hiding the facts from us. You're saying that Sora could be lying to us. No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. You shook her head as she spoke. On one hand, someone might have created a program to orchestrate the whole thing, including keeping Sora silent. Or it could mean that Sora might not be involved. Maybe she doesn't know anything or just hasn't noticed. But for now, I don't know if it's true or not. Whether my suspicions are correct, or we're all just a big misunderstanding. Anyway, I can worry about that after I've cracked the protection. For now, I'm just trying to access the supercomputer on Intel Null from this console. I don't know whether I can even gain access, but I'm pretty sure that's where the data is. Yep. At least I know where the data is. Well, at least it's the start. You suddenly became more upbeat. Cracking the security protection is going to be a real pain. This is a stubborn code. So what exactly awaits hidden inside? It's a little too soon to go there. Until I can get inside, it's the same as not knowing a thing. You said this as she gave a big shrug. Yeah, but I still think it's loads better than knowing nothing at all. Well, maybe you're right. You gave me a smile. Then she popped her neck and rotated her stiff shoulders. Now then, back to work. Alright you, good luck. There's still time. Okay. Turning it back to me, you began to peek at the keyboard. But still, you know, without stopping her hands, she muttered quietly. My mother used to tell me all about my father's habits. So I know where the clues are to be found. 
Decoding something as inorganic as a computer program is possible because even programmers have habits. For a long time, you stared at the monitor. She didn't look my way, so I couldn't read her expression anymore. But I could tell by her shaky voice, she was probably crying. Without saying a word, I slipped out of the security office. Is there really an incel null? If so, no matter whether Lemu was crushed or not, she'd still be okay. Tell me, Takeshi, after you escape from here safely, what's the first thing you want to do? Were her words just a flimsy attempt at compassion? I feel like I've gained a new perspective on human life. Come on everybody, believe in tomorrow, so that you can live today. Are those words just robotic program phrases? Simple utterances encoded to pacify and comfort humans? Suddenly I felt a distance between Sora's existence and my own. It was time for dinner. I made enough sandwiches for everyone and passed them out. Everyone moved with them to the rest area. We gathered on the circular stage in the center of the room and began eating. At a wave of Sora's hand, a gentle rain started pouring from the ceiling sprinklers onto the flower beds. There was even a small rainbow. Smiling, Sora stared at the fresh flowers and sparkling rainbow. Her smile was so carefree. I didn't know I didn't want to think it wasn't real. I didn't want to think she was just pretending for our benefit. But was she really smiling because she wanted to? Or was she just trying to cheer us up? We don't need to try and help Sora, she'll save herself. This thought wouldn't leave my mind. Then again, there were others here too. One of them opening her, ma her mouth so wide it didn't seem it would open anymore. Now she looked right happy. Takeshi! Ant had flipped off the wrapping paper. I want another sandwich, please. Would you be so kind as to make another one and bring it here pretty, please? She called out to me in a voice that seemed just a little too sweet. It seemed to me that she'd been crying earlier, but it must be my imagination. Alright, alright, you're such a slave driver. <laughs> What was that? Did you say something? Nothing at all, my lady. Just as long as you realise who's in charge. <laughs> Reluctantly, I trudged back to the kitchen. Can't believe that girl. It wasn't like they were hard to make. We had plenty of provisions. Still, I was irritated somehow. As I waited for the cold oil to heat up again, I anxiously fidgeted as I waited. The wire basket struck the frying pan with a clang. I'll just get this done as soon as I can. Hey! A customer had showed up without warning. Man, we could have made a killing if we charged these people. I'd like to ask for another one. If that's okay. Jeez! What, Takeshi? Did I catch you at a bad time? Sugumi looked annoyed. She always looks annoyed. Eh? Sugumi? Um... You don't want to make one? Uh, no, it, it's just... Don't worry about it, it's okay. Alright, settle down. I allowed myself to get worked up. I'm trying to shake off my frustration, I replied. You just want one? Yeah, thanks. Oh yeah, one more thing. Sugumi said this as she turned around. What about you, Coco? Hmm? I'm not sure. Coco peeked out from behind Sugumi. What do you want? Maybe I'll just eat a little something. Well, how about some bread? Okay, sounds good. Take it, Pion. I'd like some bread, please. Okay, okay, gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> um, by the way, Takeshi, were you upset a little bit earlier? Are you feeling okay, or is it... Nah, it's not like that. It just takes a little while for the oil to get warmed up, so I was irritated as well. Oh, was that it? She flashed me a smile. Okay, don't worry. Just take your time. I'll be waiting. What is with her? Sugumi grabbed onto Coco's hand and started walking slowly away. She was smiling so gently. It didn't seem like she cared about my troubles. Every time we met, I never know how to react and it bothered me some. Had she totally forgotten about the events of the other night? I had to wonder. Well... If she doesn't care, then I suppose that's best. The Sugumi before me seemed like she would never talk about dying, even by accident. I decided to believe that her smile was real. And guess what, you want to know what? I had a dream last night. Sugumi was listening to Coco intently. What kind of dream? I was riding a whale? Coco seemed to be truly enjoying herself. And Kiddo was riding it up with me. Like you're Sara. Are you Sara or are you Coco? You're f confusing me, man. And the way it was like totally bouncing all over the place. It just kept hopping and jumping. And we were in outer space, going to this place called Planet Squid, and we were flying all around. And then guess what? I met someone from Planet Kui Kui. Huh, oh really? You met someone from Planet Kui Kui, eh? Yep, yep. Kiddo and me, we both met him. 
Is that so? That's great, Coco. It's again me listen to Coco's nonsense with a smile on her face. I watched their interaction quietly. I tried to sense what they were feeling. And Takeshi, what's taking you so long? I went to the rest area and you was lounging about lazily. What the hell are you all worked up about? I'm not worked up about anything. It's just that you're so slow, I was wondering what's taken Takeshi so long is all. And so how'd it turn out, Chef? You really don't know when to shut up, do you? Look, it's right here, so stop worrying. When I showed you the package, she shrugged. Tsugumi and Coco had already finished theirs, and were following behind me. I headed over to the circle in the center of the room. Here, it's the Tanaka Special, take it. I got up on the round dies, and threw the package directly at you. What are you doing? Splat. The package flew over you's knees and landed softly in the center of the stage. Hey, come on, wake up, will you? I pretended to show surprise. Be careful, those are some gourmet goods, you know. Well, you're the one who threw it all of a sudden. Yu's cheeks puffed up. She picked up the package and dusted it off. Sorry, I was just joking. I lifted both hands in mock apology. I was worried it would fall into the water there for a second. Oh, stop it. You don't have to pick on me, you know. Crumbling, grumbling to herself, she undid the string around the wrapping. Ah. You looked at the contents and puffed up again. This sandwich is burnt. Not that badly, you should still be able to eat it. I suppose. Give me a break. We carried on needling each other like this for a while. Then suddenly someone came up and stood in front of you and me. No, maybe he'd been there for a long time. The kid was staring at both of us with a lead leaden gaze. Hey, what's wrong, kid? You don't want it? The kid held out an unopened fried chicken sandwich in his hand. You gotta eat to stay healthy, kid. It's probably cold by now. You want me to heat it up for you again? I put out my hand, but he pulled the sandwich close to himself and tried to get away. He looked at me with a hard expression, and... What? The kid crushed the sandwich in his hand, using all his strength. The wrapping paper burst and sauce flew every which way. It got in his clothes as well, but he didn't seem to notice. He didn't stop there. He took the mangled package and threw it with all his might against the water on the ground. What? What the hell are you doing? His shoulders trembled, the kid kept his face down. He was finally able to drag out some words. Sick. I'm sick of it. That's all I can take. The kid kicked at the thin layer of water at his feet. Everyone looked at him at once. I can't stand it anymore. I don't want any more of these fried chicken sandwiches. I'm sick of them. I want to eat something else. He screamed. Everyone's breath caught in their throats. Psycho! But nobody had anything to say in reply. I'm sick and tired. So what if we're still alive? There isn't any proof that anyone's going to save us. What are we doing here? Everything that we're doing here? There's no point. There isn't any point for us being here. The kid raised a shaking fist. But not finding any direction to launch it, he lowered it again. Everyone tried to keep their eyes from melt meeting. It seemed like they were afraid of what we might see. They tried desperately to avert their gazes. Nobody moved. People pressed their lips firmly together and dared not speak. St stupid fool. What the hell are you talking about? Finally, I looked up, shouting. Don't ask for the impossible. Do you have any idea what you're asking? The only food we have to eat is a sandwich and the snack shop upstairs. You know that. Can you tell me you're sick of it? You still have to eat it. It's the only way to survive. So you better be thankful for it. We're all putting up with it the best we can. You're one of the gang, right? You should be a little more cooperative. They're all being patient. They're helping out. Even if they don't like it, they eat and they're surviving. If we don't, then we're all finished. Wake up. We're all going to get through this together. As long as we're alive, there's still hope. A loud metallic sound echoed throughout the room. It was a blunt sound. The floor shook slightly. Everyone staggered slightly and struggled to regain their balance. But nobody tried to, to do anything else. I know. I know that, Takeshi. I know. But still. But even though I know, what can I do? Just then, the kid knocked the sandwich out of Yu's hand. She hadn't even taken a bite out of her Tanaka special. Rude. It fell to the water with a splash and sank slowly. Bastard, what do you think you're doing? I went over and grabbed onto the kid and raised my hand. Alright, well, seem we got a, a cho choice here. And also a very convenient cliffhanger. 
we're gonna wrap this one up and we'll choose whether we're gonna bash this kid or not the next I don't want to hit him if it was Sugumi I'd hit him because <laughs> she did try and murder us already once but uh, the kid's pretty harmless anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching thanks for taking out with me and I'll see you in the next one